Welcome to Short Talk with a Scientist. I'm Dr. Taya Klancic and I'm all about nutrition, metabolism and genetics. Today I'm thrilled to welcome Dr. Quentin Pittman, a distinguished neuroscientist with over 40 years of experience and more than 300 published papers. Dr. Pittman's research focuses on immune system, brain inflammation, neurotransmitters, and early life brain development. Dr. Pittman, it's crazy to think that it's been 10 years since we met each other when you were a co-mentor of my PhD. And I just wanna say thank you so much for taking the time and sharing your wisdom with us. So, what are the projects that you're currently working on. Okay, well, first of all, I want to say, Taya, how wonderful it is to see you after several years away and to learn how, how wonderful your life is turning out back in, in Slovenia. This is wonderful. And I still have recollections of our committee meetings when you were such a fantastic student. Oh, I kept you. wishing you were actually my student, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> It was really interesting uh, to work uh, with you because uh, many of our interests actually overlap a little bit because I'm also interested in the gut and interested in how the brain interacts with the body. And one of the things I've been particularly interested in is, is the, the phenomenon that occurs when people have what we call a chronic inflammatory disease. Mm -hmm. What do we mean by a chronic inflammatory disease? Well, an example of chronic inflammatory disease would be rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. could be chronic liver disease, cirrhosis of the liver, yeah. or what I'm particularly interested in is colitis. So colitis is sometimes known as Crohn's disease. There right. are varieties of it. And colitis is essentially an autoimmune disease where the intestines become highly inflamed and it's, it's a terrible disease for people because it causes a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort and they have problems with their digestion and it's uh, fortunately it's being better controlled now but at one time you know you had to look at the possibility of actually having a piece of your intestine having to be surgically removed because mm -hmm. it was so ulcerated and inflamed but what I'm I'm not a gut person really what mm -hmm. I am is I'm a, I'm a brain person right and what I was really interested in with these chronic inflammatory diseases such as colitis is the fact that they are associated with what we call behavioral comorbidity. Mm -hmm. So what do we mean by that? What we mean is when people have these diseases, not only uh, do they have all of the intestinal problems mm -hmm. that I talked about, mm -hmm. but they also tend to show anxiety, depression, uh, cognitive fog, or their difficulty thinking. Mm -hmm. And these are what we call psychiatric or behavioral comorbidities. And you might say, well, imagine if you're a young lady and I'm a physician and I tell you you come because you've had diarrhea or intestinal problems and I say well I'm sorry to tell you Taya but you've got Crohn's disease and you go home and google it and you find oh it's going to cause this and this and this and this and it's going to be terrible and my life is going to be awful well you might very well get depressed and anxious over something like that but the interesting thing is we can do this in mice and rats mm -hmm. and they also show symptoms of what we think are signs of anxiety and depression in animals. And they have no idea to predict the future. They can't right. go and Google and say, when I have colitis, this is what's gonna happen to me in six months as a rat or mm -hmm. as a mouse. So therefore we think there's what we call an organic basis to this. It's not just situational. Right. So, so the big question is, so then we can have a, a, a rat or a mouse model of colitis as we call it. And the big question is, is how does an inflammation in your intestines cause a change in your behavior? And you know your behavior is controlled by your brain. brain yeah. So there must be some way that the brain is finding out about what's going on in the gut. Mm -hmm. And so we've spent a number of years trying to, trying to learn how this communication takes place. And it's really quite interesting because there's probably more than one way that the brain learns about what goes on in the body. Uh, it's so important that they do that, there's what's called redundancy. Mm -hmm. Redundancy is not a bad word. It means if one thing doesn't work properly, something else will. We hope all of the airplanes that fly in the air have redundancy in them, <laughs> so that if one thing doesn't work, something else will take kind of over. Plan B. So the brain has a lot of ways to try to figure out what goes on in our body, mm -hmm. both in health and in disease. Mm -hmm. And what we've discovered that occurs 
is that when the intestines become inflamed mm -hmm. due to this, and we can do this by putting something into their intestines that's mm -hmm. an irritant and the, the intestines become inflamed, it activates white cells. White cells are part of the immune system. Most right. people are familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And what happens is these white cells then start to express receptors and molecules on their cell membranes. And what these do is these cells then circulate through the body. Mm -hmm. And what they do is when they come up to the brain, and remember the brain is perfused by blood, right. what right. these cells do is they tend to attach to blood vessels. And they call what we call rolling and adhering. And we can actually look at that in real time because we have ways that we can make these white cells actually fluorescently glow. Right. And we can look at, at them with a special kind of, of, of microscope and we can actually watch these cells going through the circulation. And what we see is when they're coming through the circulation mm -hmm. of colitis, they actually stop. They're kind of, they come along, they roll, and then they stop. And when they do that, mm -hmm. they signal to the brain vasculature to the blood vessels in the brain mm -hmm. and these blood vessels then create make molecules that then are secreted into the brain and they activate the brain and they activate a group of cells in the brain in particular called microglia yeah. and microglia are essentially the immune cells in the brain mm -hmm. and what they do then is they make a bunch of different kinds of molecules and they crawl around the brain and things like that. Mm -hmm. And anyhow, they change the way the brain works. Right. And when the brain is changed, and I'm a neurophysiologist, I can actually go in and record from individual neurons. I can show that those neurons are actually changed in their activity wow. as a function of these microglial cells. So this is essentially how this information gets from the, from the um, gut. Uh, gut to the brain. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is, is that we have discovered Mm -hmm. that you don't actually have to have colitis in order for this to occur. All you have to have is the gut contents from a colitic animal. And you can transfer this behavioral phenotype. So what we did is we took four microbiota. little mice. Microbiota. The microbiota. Okay. So mm -hmm. we, and this is why I knew you'd be happy about this. <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. what we do then is we, we take a mouse mm -hmm. and we give them colitis. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is we take the contents of their intestines and there it's what we call a dysmorphic or dystrophic gut, uh, dysbiotic gut right. contents. Right. And we take them and then we give it to another mouse that we prepared for this by either giving them antibiotics and cleaning out all of their, right. all of their gut microbiota. Sterile mouse. Sterile mouse, mm -hmm. or we can do it into a germ-free mouse that exactly. has grown up with nothing. Mm -hmm. And when we instill this colitic gut contents right. into this naive mouse. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, they showed the same kind of behaviors that the original mice did. And these behaviors are what we think are, are indicative of anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. and inability to perform properly in terms of thinking. Fantastic. So that's kind of those are kind of the things that we've been quite interested in recently, and I thought maybe you'd be interested. That in is them. fantastic. Uh, to sum it up, basically, you nicely explained in a great depth how contents in our gut, mm -hmm. like bacteria, fungi, mm -hmm. uh, etc., contribute to our mood disorders. Exactly. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And I should tell you that this is, we look at this in the context of disease, and there are other people who are also asking similar questions and finding similar evidence that the state of the microbiota actually can determine mood in a variety of other conditions as well. I have one random question for you, just popped up. Okay. Can we do a fecal, micro uh, fecal microbiota transplant for happiness? <laughs> 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 the opposite, you know, is anyone? Researching happiness, I not just uh, mood disorders. I don't know if anybody's <laughs> done that, but as you well know, uh, fecal microbiota transplants have been have been used for uh, uh, a number of years for some of the uh, for some GI gastrointestinal right. diseases. Yes. Mm -hmm. I I'm not aware if they're uh, if they're um, doing that yet, but there's certainly an active area of research mm -hmm. in psychiatry where people are trying to use probiotics and prebiotics mm -hmm. to manipulate the microbiota in mm -hmm. order to change behavior. Right. And for yeah. example, right here in Calgary, the head of psychiatry, Dr. Val Taylor, has mm -hmm. actually got a, a project on that, on 
on trying to develop these probiotics that will change mood and cure some aspects of mental disease. Well, that is fantastic. Dr. Pittman, thank you so much for this. This was so insightful and so full of information. I just want to say sincere thank you again for taking the time out of your busy schedule and meeting up with me today. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me. It's a real pleasure. Thank you.